All right, let's move on to part two. So let's go, we're gonna work on the volume flow rate on page 253. Okay, so a volume flow rate is basically, if you look at uh, page 253, the volume flow rate is equal to volume over time. So the volume flow rate is listed the delta in volume over the time, right? Okay, so, you know, this V is a capital V, not to be confused with the small V. The small V was what? That was the acceleration, right? Because we're changing, looking at the change of velocity. We're looking at change of volume here, okay? So the page, go to page 54, 254. So you have a pipe, basically, right? You have a pipe here. You have a pipe where you have water flowing through or a fluid flowing through it, right? And you're looking at the flow rate here, right? Okay. So if you look there, there is a volume average. So let's go, let's just jump into page, let's go to the example 8.4. 8 we'll talk about uh, 8.4 and we'll talk about the volume flow rate here. In 8.4, we have a piping system shown in figure 8.11. Average speed of the water flowing through the 12 inch diameter section of the piping system is five feet per second. What is the volume flow rate of the water in the piping system? Okay. Express the flow rate in gallons per minute, liters there, and then, then go ahead and find the average speed in the six inch diameter section of the system. Okay, so let's look at the volume flow rate. The volume flow rate is you're going to have one. So basically, you have a system where you had, right? You have this here was a diameter of 12 inches. So this here is 12 inches. This here is six inches. Okay six inches and the speed of the here is five feet per second, five feet per second. And what we wanna know is we wanna know V2 here, right? So the flow rate, let's look at the volume flow rate. The volume flow rate is what? What is the volume that's going by here, right? So the volume that's going by here is what? We're gonna have the flow rate, right? You have the five feet per second, right? Five feet per second. So what do you have to find? We're to find, we're gonna have to find the area here, the cross section, right? The cross section is what? Since the diameter is 12, the radius is gonna be six. So it's gonna be six inches squared times pi, right? Six squared, or if you wanna do it, well, it's like this, right? Six inches squared pi, right? But it's pi r squared. So basically, you when you do this out, you're gonna get inches squared here, you get an inch squared here. Okay. All right. So this is the volume flow rate. Okay. So what do you got? If I change this into inches squared to feet squared, right? Because I want the volume, right? So it's gonna be five feet per second times 36. And I have inches squared, so I have one, I need to go, I have one inches squared, right? I need one, I had inches squared, I need to change this into feet squared. So one foot squared is 144 inches squared, right? Because one foot is 12 inches. 144 is 12 squared, right? And of course there's the pi here, right? So the inches squared cancel out. I have feet, feet squared, so I have feet cubed per second. And that's what they asked for, right? Feet cubed per second. Yeah, feet cubed per second. So I'm gonna get what? I'm gonna get five times 36 pi over 144. 
right? So this is a four, so I'm going to have five pi over four feet cubed per second. Okay, so that's your answer there. Okay, well now what else do I want to know? And so I can change this into gallons per minute and liters per second. Okay, so I'll let you guys do that. I'm not going to go through that one. That was pretty simple. And then it says, oh, what is the volume? What is the velocity here? So what's happening here? The volumetric flow rate here, the volume flow rate is the same as the flow rate here because you're not adding anything different or subtracting or taking anything away, right? It's not like you have a double branch here or anything like that. So whatever volume is flowing through here has to flow through here, okay? So basically, since the volume flow rate is this guy, I'm gonna have five pi over four is equal to the flow rate here, which is gonna be what? Is going to be three inches squared pi, because that's the pi r squared here, times v2. Okay, however, now you also have to change this inches into feet squared. So I'm going to get what? This is going to be divided by 144. And then I'm going to be able to say this is feet squared to be the same. Okay. 5 pi over 4 is equal to 1. Oh, is equal to V2, 144. V2 is equal to 144. Pi over 5 pi. Divided by 4, I get 3, 24, 6, 180 pi. Okay, it's 180 pi, right? Uh, da, 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 where are we at? Okay, so obviously the volume of flow, the flow rate here or the velocity of the is going to be a lot faster, right? Because what's happening? You're actually squeezing it down so it has to travel faster to get through to get all the volume through, right? This is basically how your pressure washer hose works, right? Because it, it sends your water through a cascading series of smaller and smaller and smaller diameters, therefore increasing the prop, increasing the velocity of the water, and therefore it hits the sidewalk or whatever you're trying to clean at a much faster volume, and therefore being able to you know, spray off whatever whatever debris you have. Okay, so this is how that works. All right. Okay, that's that. So that's what how volume flow rate works. Okay. Last but not least, let's look at angular velocity. Angular velocity is nothing more than the how quickly the angles change, right? The angles change. So your angular velocity, so your normal velocity is what? Your normal velocity, again, is this. Angular velocity, we use omega. Omega is the delta in radians or angles over time. So that's that, okay. And then what do we have? Um, da, da, da. So we have also, we can go ahead and find that, what? The relationship between the linear, so how does this angular velocity relate to linear velocity, you know, you know in a straight line? So in a straight line, what do you have? What do we have? We knew that your S is equal to R theta, right? We know this, okay? And this is what? This is your radian to length, right? This is the radians to length where R is your radius, and this is the amount of radians or angle, right? Okay, 
So if I go ahead and divide this by four or five, so I, I, since I can say this, and the radius is going to stay the same, I can say the change in this is this, the change in this is the same as the change in that. Like this would be the relationship. So if I divide this by the same amount of time, what is this? This is the velocity, right? Like your linear velocity is equal to your radius times your angular velocity, right? Because this is your angular velocity here. Okay. All right, so that's that. Uh, we should go over example 8.5 together. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and make an angular velocity. Let's do the example number 8.5. Okay, we have determine the rotational speed of a car wheel if the car is translating is translating along a speed of 55 miles per hour. Radius of the wheel is 12.5 inches. So we have a radius of 12.5 inches, and your speed you are going is 55 miles per hour. So we're going to go ahead and translate the 55 miles per hour. And what we're trying to find is what? We're trying to find, determine the rotational speed, the rotational speed. So we're trying to find the omega, right? The omega was the V, so the relationship that we just developed was at the velocity divided by R, right? Because the velocity was R omega. Okay, we are trying to find the omega and we are given this. So we have 55 miles per hour. Well, let's go ahead. 55 miles per hour over a radius of 12.5 inches. Okay. So let's go ahead and see if we can work this out. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to start over here. 55 miles, one mile is? What, 5280 feet. Then I have one foot is 12 inches, <clears throat> right? Should the feet. Cancel out. And then I have hour, right? And then I'm going to have five, five inches. Then I'm going to have one hour on the bottom. So I have one hour is going to be equal to three, six, zero seconds. Are we changing seconds? Or oh, yeah, we're going to seconds. Are we changing the miles to inches? Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're going miles to inches. Are we going to just did, or I feel we're going to stay at feet. Okay, let's go ahead and stay at feet. So we'll go this. And we have so we have miles per hour, right? Miles per hour here, and then we have. 12.5 inches on the bottom. Okay, so let's go ahead now. One mile, five, two, eight, zero feet. I'm gonna change this inch into feet. You know, 12 inches gonna be one feet. Inches cancel out, miles cancel out, the feet cancel out, all right? And then I'm basically gonna have hour, right? So let's go ahead and change that into seconds. So one hour is this many seconds. So the hours cancel out. Okay, but what am I missing here? I need to get angles. I need to get radians in here somehow, right? So I also know that what? One revolution, right? One revolution is how many radians here? It's going to be 25 pi, right? Because it's 2 pi r. So it's 2 pi r. Okay. Are we, uh, are we using that or are we not using that? 
No, it's like we're not using. We're just going to go ahead and so where are we at? Miles. So all I have left is this. So I have radians per second. We're good to go. 55 divided by 12.5 times 5280 times 12 divided by 360 radians per second. And if you do that out, you get 77.4 radians per second. Okay, now we have to do some, has it asked you to change it to RPM? It doesn't, but the book goes, goes ahead and changes it to RPM there for you. Okay, so how would you make that transition? We have 77.4 radians per second, right? So one radian is what? One radian is equal to two pi r, right? Two pi r, right? No, I'm sorry. One revolution is what? How many radians? Two pi two radians, pi. Right? right? And then you have to also change the seconds to minutes. So you have one minute is 60 seconds. So the seconds cancel out. Rides canceling, you can have revolutions per minute, RPM, right? That's basically what RPM is. There you go. If you do that, you're going to get 7.39 RPM revolutions per minute. Okay, everybody understand where I got this? One revolution is two pi radians, right? If you go around one revolution around the circle, that's two pi, right? It's 360 degrees, right? There was there a question there? Yes. Um, for the uh, final rotational speed, uh -huh. it, what, it's not decimal. It's 739 instead. Oh, 739. Yeah, yeah, 739. Because you're doing what? This is 60, right? Yeah. And this is what? This is 3.14. So it's going to be 2. 6.28. So basically almost 10 times this, right? So uh, 10 I see. times that, that would be 739, right? Yeah. Okay, all right, yeah, good. Okay, so that's that. And then there's angular acceleration, all right? That's nothing more than what? Angular acceleration is going to be what? Basically delta omega over delta t, right? Because delta omega, omega was the angular speed. So the angular acceleration is going to be that, okay? And I believe it's alpha is the preferred notation for angular acceleration. Let me see. Does the book show this? No, the book doesn't show it. Okay, anyway, so there you go. Okay, so I'm not gonna do 8.6. I think the 8.6 you guys can figure out uh, pretty easily. So I'm gonna let that go.